We just love OLED displays. And you know that, don't you? Because if this is not the first video you watch, you will have seen our Skyway controllers demonstrated multiple times. Displays all over the place for encoder knobs, for buttons. Not so much for the joystick though. What would you use an OLED display for in that case? But everywhere it makes sense. We like to label things with nice crisp graphics and text that will show you the function of a button or the value of an encoder. So this is also true when we have buttons to recall presets. There we like to give you the ability to label that button. So instead of having numbers 1 through uh, 12 and having a text on a piece of paper next to you where you note down what the preset is about, you can actually write it in the display. And that's what I'm gonna show you as the case for label formatting in this video. So if we just take a step back and look at what uh, types of formattings we normally use, we have certain patterns. We usually go by a title line, we go by a value. That value could be the iris or it could be the, the label of a camera and the title bar will tell you the context. Maybe for a preset uh, label, you would like to use the whole display for the label instead of having a title bar, for instance. And um, presets, generally, this is something that you find on robotic cameras. So no matter what camera, robotic camera you have, you will typically find a feature in that camera where you can recall a position. That is pan, tilt, zoom, and the camera will find back to that position. Now, um, if you try to record such positions by numbers, you can probably manage five, ten presets in your head. If you had labels, you could manage basically unlimited pages of presets because you can read where the camera will go. Now, um, on the PDC Extreme, we have already demonstrated a few times that these labels can be drawn differently. So let's get to it and look at what these formatting codes are. So basically the way we did this was to give you a way when you type in the label to add a prefix for the label so that it will get formatted differently. The PDC Extreme on the table in front of me already has labels for robotic cameras here. They are numbered. So I will now show you how we can change that into a custom label that will fit to the context of the concert or the um, sports game you're recording or the lecture you're capturing. The Skyhoy firmware application is the go-to place when you want to configure your controller. So in this case, I have it on my local network. It means my, my laptop and this one can talk to each other over IP. I also have a USB connection to the PDC Extreme, so it pops up in the firmware application. And when I press the local configuration button, I will be guided to the internal web page of the PDC Extreme. All right. So um, I need to press it once more. I'm sorry. And come on, there we go. Yes, you see the PDC Extreme is now drawn on the web page here. And if we um, click any of the preset buttons, uh, this is preset buttons. This is uh, the buttons typically used for presets on a PDC Extreme. So I just click one of these. And um, now I want to filter out what we are seeing on the screen so it's a little easier to follow. Now we see. Um, if I press this button, I'm going to recall preset number one. If I hold down the shift key, I'm going to recall preset number 13. All right. This is what I see from the configuration right here. Now, I have a modifier for this action that allows me to use labels from a grid. So I need to, to, to select that. And then I scroll down on the page a little bit here. And there you see I have um, a number of rows and a number of columns. The rows will represent each camera because presets on each camera will be different, right? And the, um, the columns represent the presets themselves. So um, there is one thing I want to check, which is what cameras we are having active. We have active camera 4 and 5. So, um, and that's another good thing to notice. You can actually see it in the header right now. This is why the labels, uh, the title bars can be useful. It says camera four preset, right? Camera five preset. So in fact, what I'm doing right now, I need to 
at five rows because camera one, two, and three is currently offline and I'm working with camera four and five. Now let's type in something here. Let's say I'm doing a concert, so I'll write drums for the first label. And uh, for the second one here, I'm gonna write uh, vocal. And then for camera five, I will, um, oh wait, I wanna have more columns by the way. I, I wanna have 15 columns. I'm gonna write drums and vocal. Um, maybe on camera five, the vocal is on preset number one. And um, mm, yeah, I don't know, uh, lead, lead vocal? Yeah, let's, let's say that. I have two different singers in this band, okay? And I'm also gonna go to um, preset number 13 and write bass guitar on this one. So I'm now gonna save. And um, I, I wanna go back to uh, the second button here, this one recalling preset number two because I need to set this one, the label uh, preset times uh, camera and save. So we'll just wait as it's currently saving we'll see immediately the change on the PDC controller. And notice, first of all, as I'm changing between camera four and five, I'm also seeing a change to the label because I have separate labels for cameras. And now I'm gonna press for camera four, the shift button, and we'll see that um, the, the preset that was number 13 is now labeled base. First step, not formatting, just typing in labels for presets so you can see how quickly you can really uh, populate your presets on a controller like this one and manage much more than five or ten presets. So now comes the formatting, okay? Because I would like to have, I would like to have longer labels for this. For instance, um, let's say that this would actually be the lead vocal that I have on this preset and this would be lead guitar. Then uh, if I type, uh, let's type in lead guitar like this, full label. So the thing is, if I save this as it is right now, uh, we are just gonna see the, the word lead in the display, but we wanna see everything that we typed in. I think the same is true as we go here, it's totally the same. Now, if I prefix this with $f2, space and I copy this to the next one as well. We have decided that this formatting command will tell the label rendition, a rendering engine, to skip the title bar. As you can see now it says lead vocal and I go to camera 5 and it says lead guitar. There's no R there. You, you have to figure out how you deal with five characters on one line and five on another one but it is so much more useful that you can now use the full display to make labels for your presets like this. The final, uh, of course you can do this for all the labels. You're gonna do that yourself and I'm not gonna waste your time doing more labels now. You can figure out what this is. You, you saw it on the screen behind me before that we can have beautiful labels all over the place. The, the thing that you haven't seen yet is that we have formatting option number three and that gives you larger labels in case you want that. Now, you wouldn't like it, um, maybe let's just do it for these over here. So like this, um, I prefix them $F3 space, save, and we'll now see what happens to the first display here. It is gonna say vocal in an even larger font size, which is not super useful if you have a label which is five characters long but it is useful if you could just find a way to uh, restrain yourself and label things with three characters. You now have even bigger font size in the displays on your Skyhoy controller. That is, ladies and gentlemen, for formatting of strings, and it is available for presets, it's available for any other string that you can user define on a Skyhoy surface as of today. Actually, it has been around for a month or so. so but this is the first public uh, presentation of label formatting.